Hello, welcome back. We're going to dive into ratio analysis, which will allow, which will give us more information about the performance of a company. And just as the common size statements allow us to, to have better comparison, both across time and companies of different sizes, um, the ratio analysis give us more in-depth information. As you look at each ratio, ask this very important question. What is the ratio trying to measure and why is that information important? So it, it's not just about computing the ratio, it's very important to know why you're doing it and why is that information important. Ratio analysis are used both internally by managers and also externally by investors. Uh, it's one of the most important tools of, ma of managers and investors alike. So this is um, ratio analysis is the, we would say, the bed and brother of um, business management. So this is definitely a tool that is not confined to finance or accounting. If you're a manager, if you're an investor, if you have anything to do with, with businesses, it's very important that you have a good mastery of ratio analysis. So let's take a look at different types of financial ratios. First, we start with the short-term ratios. So the short-term ratios are sometimes called solvency or liquidity ratios. These ratios measure the ability of the company to pay its immediate obligations. Immediate typically translate into one year or, or, or shorter. So this is about the firm's financial. A company that has liquidity problem, even you have a great, even if it's a great company with a great prospect, could be driven into bankruptcy because it cannot pay its bill in the short term. So liquidity is very important. So this is a survival, survivorship uh, ratio. If a company has liquidity problem, that needs to be addressed right away. Next. We look at long-term solvency or long-term financial leverage ratio. This has to do with how much debt a company uses, what are its interest burden, and therefore what is the long-term viability of a company. So long-term solvency ratio is a more long-term planning. The company may not, may not be very financially healthy in the long term. That means management should start planning now so that they can um, avoid um, poor outcome in the future. So this is a uh, short-term solvency ratio tells you what you need to do right away in order to survive. Long-term solvency ratio tells you that uh, or identify potential challenges and also potential opportunities that help management change or shift in the direction that is most advantageous to the, to the company. Next, we look at uh, we, group, we have a group of ratios called asset management or turnover ratio. These ratios focuses on the efficiency of the firm. How efficient is management using the asset in place? Um, is it, does it have too much idle resources that management is not using? Or is the, com is the company coming close to um, its capacity and therefore um, in will not be able to continue its current growth projection if it does not increase capacity. So looking at the turnover ratio or management ratio tells you a very important prospect both about management's ability and also the long-term viability of the firm. So again, you can you can have a you have you can have underutilization or you can have a company who may be um, Maxing up is maxing out is capacity. Those are both areas of concern. Um, obviously, every company look at profitability ratio. In fact, in if anything, profitability ratios oftentimes are overemphasized in companies. Of course, it's important for a company to be profitable, but it's also important to understand what drives the profitability, both good and bad. So in order for the company to, if a company is not being profitable, then you need to take one step back and look at where is the inefficiency or mismanagement um, occur, and therefore what changes the company need to make to become more profitable. Uh, a company can also be very profitable, and you still may want to ask that question. Is the profitability sustainable? 
Is profitability driven by good management technique, or is it because the company overextends its leverage, is maxing up capacity, and therefore, even though it's very profitable today, that profitability is not sustainable because what is driving the profitability is leverage risk taking and maximizing capacity with no long term plan for sustainable output. So. Those are the questions that you need to ask as you look at each ratio. Last but not least, you can have a fantastic company, but it may not be a good investment. So if you're an investor, another set of ratios that you need to focus on are market ratios. Market ratios tells you the relationship between fundamentals of the firm and the stock price of the firm. So you can, you can have a company that's a really great company, but if everybody knows about that and they have driven up the stock, stock price, that company may not be a good investment. On the other hand, you, have a company, you may have a company that may not look terrific on numbers, but if it is undervalued, if investors overlook that company, it can be a good investment. So a good company and a good investment sometimes is not one and the same. Sometimes they are. You should not buy a company who is poorly performing just because it's undervalued. You also need to look at, well, is there a chance that they can turn around? Of course, if you are a large enough investor, you can buy an undervalued company and turn it around yourself. Here's a table that summarizes the formulas for computing different types of ratio. I'll highlight a few um, examples from this ratio and uh, from this table, and then we'll talk and then talk about um, the things that we want to pay attention to. So some ratios, both um, all the information comes from the same financial statement. So for example, the current ratio. The current ratio is defined as the current asset divided by current liability. So in this case, both information comes from the balance sheet. Um, and if you're computing current ratio, you can either compute the current ratio for the current year or the past year or the average. So either all the values will be valid and you can compute the ratio for this year and for last year and look at how the ratio has changed over time. Um, another type of ratios are operation ratios. So here is an example times interest earn ratio. It's defined as EBIT divided by interest. And the EB earnings before interest and tax and interest expense both come from the income statement. So this will be, so for 2015, this will be the earnings before interest and tax that the company generate from January through December of 2015 divided by the interest that the company pay out during the same time period. So again, relatively straightforward. Then you have some ratios that combine information from more than one financial statement. Many of the turnover or efficiency ratio falls into this category. So inventory turnover, for example, the cost of goods sold in the numerator comes from the income statement, and the numerator is inventory. Inventory comes from the balance sheet. Now we have a slightly challenging dynamic here when we have a ratio that uses information from both the income statement and the balance sheet. The reason for that is because income statement is a single point in time, whereas the uh, income statement it represents the information throughout the entire fiscal year, but the balance sheet represents a single point in time. So in this example, the cost of goods sold represents the expenses that the company has paid all the way from January through December of 2015. But inventory, we have two numbers. We have a beginning number and an ending number. And the question is, which number should we use in the denominator? The answer is, it depends. If the company has not changed significantly in, in its operation and the beginning and ending inventory number is approximately the same, then it doesn't really matter. On the other hand, if the company has grown tremendously, then we need to pay some, we need to pay some attention. Let me use a, a, an example that um, may be more obvious. So let's take a look at this ratio, the total asset turnover ratio. Let's say you have a company that is a limousine company. At the beginning of the year, you have one car and you are able to generate um, $100,000 in revenue per month with one car. 
halfway through the year by june you re you recognize you realize that you have too many businesses that you have to turn away because you only have one car so in june you decided to buy a second car and after you added the second car business was tremendous and you have two hundred thousand dollars per year per month in revenue from july through december so if you do the simple math you notice that you have $180,000, uh, $1.8 million in revenue throughout the year. Um, the first six, month aver six months average $100,000 per month. The second six months average $200,000 per month. And if you look at the total asset, the beginning total asset has one car and the ending total asset has two cars. So the question is, do you divide the $1.8 million in sales by one or by two? And the answer is neither is actually correct because you generated half the revenue using one car and you generated half the revenue using two cars. So in this case, you may need to compute the average because on average, you generated the revenue using one and a half cars. Now in real, in real life, you can never have one and a half cars, but to attribute, to attribute the entire revenue to one car or two car, either case will be inaccurate. So in those situations, you should use the average. So this is why it's very important to ask the question, what information are you trying to get and why is that, why is that information important? So when we are working with particularly efficiency ratios and we have information from both the income statement and the balance sheet, we have to be particularly careful on what information we are computing. I suggest that you print out or you copy out the formulas and use that as we go through a, an example. So we'll, we'll stop the, this video here. In the next video, we'll use this information, these ratios, this formula here, applying to the, to the income statement and balance sheet that you have seen earlier on and use that to compute the various ratio and go over what the ratio tells us.